Like a camera, our eyes help us to focus on what's important and to capture our most treasured memories. But every year, dozens of babies and toddlers face the prospect of losing their sight to cancer. When Alice was two and a half, I, I was playing a game with her. Point to mummy's nose. And I covered one eye. Point to mummy's nose. And she could, couldn't point to my nose. I spoke to uh, my dad. He suggested to like play pirates with her. Alice is being a pirate. Can you see Alice? Alice, wave hello to Nanny and Granddad. When I covered her good eye, um, she sort of walked into a door and couldn't see anything there. And I think that was the immediate point that I knew sort of something seriously is wrong here. She, she can't see. I just remember feeling sick. So our options were either um, a nucleation, which is like removing her eye, um, or chemotherapy. We rats. Alice was diagnosed with the devastating eye cancer, retinoblastoma, a cancer that develops in the retina, the light sensitive lining at the back of our eyes. Now, it was a difficult time for Alice and her family, but fortunately, the Childhood Eye Cancer Trust was there to provide support and advice. Leslie is a specialist retinoblastoma support worker for the charity, one of two covering the whole of the UK. When your child is first diagnosed with retinoblastoma, parents can feel numb, they can feel a huge sense of grief and devastation and almost disbelief because for most families, this is something that happens to somebody else, not to them. Do you think it might go in here? Leslie was sort of always around. I think that was really important and it was almost like, although it was a hospital visit and there were things that Alice hated going on during that hospital visit, oh. there was also that key thing that she was going to see some people she knew there. And Leslie was someone to talk to about any concerns that you had. It's very gentle. And she classed Leslie as her friend. <gasps> wow! After months of difficult chemotherapy, things were starting to look good for Alice. But then in February last year, Alice relapsed. The surgeon suggested trying interarterial chemotherapy, um, which is chemotherapy that goes directly into the back of the eye. And I think that was the point where we said, we don't want her to go through anything that she doesn't have to go through. How do you tell a three-year-old that their eye is going to be removed? And how much of an understanding do they have about that? We felt was best, better that we did it with the support of people who had already done that and knew how to best go about that. Unfortunately, currently around half of all children diagnosed with retinoblastoma will need to have one or occasionally both eyes removed to stop the cancer from spreading. This is why the Childhood Eye Cancer Trust, known as CHECKED, need your donations so that their support workers can give families like Alice's the skills and confidence that they need to cope. Alice is comfortable with her artificial eye. She is happy to tell people about it. Alice's confidence is definitely down to um, how we've learned to deal with the situation. And I think that has come from speaking to Leslie at the hospital. The main thing is we as a charity are there for them, uh, whatever they want. An early diagnosis of eye cancer can help to save a child's sight, which is why the Childhood Eye Cancer Trust has for over three decades funded research into many areas, including the advancements in genetic screening, which is so vital for children that are at risk of inheriting the disease. Rob was diagnosed with retinoblastoma in the 1970s. I was 14 months old when they operated to take the eye away but not only that, to keep me alive. Rob was special. I fell in love with him. He said that he'd had retinoblastoma as an infant, and that if we choose to start a family in the future, our children may be diagnosed with the same illness. When Joshua was born in 2002, doctors couldn't see any tumours. But six weeks later, following more tests, Josh was diagnosed with retinoblastoma. Your world comes crashing down. But at the same time, you know the treatment's out there. It was basically, yes, 
you're in a good position. Had it have been waited three months, the tumours that Josh already had would have got bigger. And if we know that a child, a baby, is going to get retinoblastoma as early as possible, we can treat those tumours early and that will save the child's vision, save the child from having to have the eye removed and save the child's life. Joshua's brother Jamie was also born with eye cancer. Incredibly, Jamie was diagnosed even earlier than his brother. His RB was discovered when he was only four days old. Over the last 10 years, the Chartered Eye Cancer Trust has been funding research, realising that if you can get these babies into the system earlier through genetic testing, it can make a big difference. Without the research that Czech are doing and funding, they would be in the same situation as what I was in back in the 70s. With long intensive treatments, and for some the loss of an eye, the trauma of childhood eye cancer can linger through to adulthood, as was the case for 17-year-old Harry. I was reading, because I used to be a bit of a bookworm, and these black spots in my eyes kind of like blocked out words. And we went to the opticians and they said, whoa. Harry was diagnosed with retinoblastoma later than what would be expected. It was quite scary for me at first, especially with eight-year-old primary school fellow students going, oh my God, are you going to die? But following two long years of chemo, Harry needed to have his left eye removed. My mum was crying. And so I think I kind of took that in a way that kind of just went, I can't be sad because mum's crying and I've got to be, I've got to be strong. Harry found himself struggling and needed counselling. There was definitely a feeling of isolation. Like RB being such a rare cancer, it's, it is also rare that you come across somebody who knows exactly what's going on and who feels the same as you do. That's why the Childhood Eye Cancer Trust established a teen-focused council, giving teenagers like Harry an opportunity to come together and share their experiences. I've made plenty of friendships through the Teen Focus Council. I can always have a laugh and we can have a joke, and maybe even eye-related jokes. I think it's really important to laugh about it. It's really helpful to give other people a chance to get involved and to learn about checks and what we do. Life is quite isolating if you let it be like that, which is why I like coming to stuff like this as often as I can. I no longer worry about whether my eyes restrict me too much. I, I definitely think Czech has helped with my confidence. Early detection is key, and a simple thing like a photograph can help. A white glow seen in the eye or in flash photos can be a sign of retinoblastoma. Eye cancer is rare, but it always makes sense to get checked if you see anything that concerns you. To help more families and children like Alice, Harry, Josh and Jamie, please, please, make a donation to Checked, the Childhood Eye Cancer Trust. To give by phone, call 0800 011 011. Calls are free for mobiles and landlines. Text GIVE to 70121 to donate 10 pounds. Text GIVE to 70120 to donate 20 pounds. Text cost your donation plus your standard network message charge and 100% of your donation will go to the Childhood Eye Cancer Trust. For full terms and conditions or to make a donation online, please visit the Lifeline website at bbc.co.uk slash lifeline. Or if you'd like to post a donation, please make your cheque payable to the Childhood Eye Cancer Trust and send it to free post BBC Lifeline Appeal writing checked on the back of the envelope. Thank you.